Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi my name is Monica. I like to comment on unethical businesses with a focus on multi-level marketing and just provide commentary on many other things. If you hear any weird noises, my daughter is in the room with me. She is currently <laughs> off camera. So if you hear any noises, that's, that's what it is. But in today's video, I normally would not talk about any kind of current events or anything like that, but I just felt the need to talk about this and to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the person behind this. Never did I ever think that one of my videos would focus on flatulence and feces. Yes, we will be talking about farts and poops <laughs> in today's video. Most of this video is probably going to be a voiceover just because I do have my daughter in the room with me. So in case I need to get up and take care of her, take a break or something like that, uh, so yeah, so most of it's going to be a voiceover. It'll just be easier for me to do it that way. So the reason why I wanted to speak on this topic is because of the fact that it is a business of sorts. There is a woman that was selling her farts in a jar. Just as a disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only and just my opinions along with any kind of research that I was able to do. Most of the research I did for this video was uh, just articles that I found online, YouTube, and the content creators Instagram as well. So of course, do your own research. I do always encourage that. But as I said earlier, I normally do not report on current events, but because there's a mentorship that's being spoken about, and I just had to take a look at it because this also inspired a particular reality TV star from MTV's Teen Mom to start selling poop as well. Not to mention this story just shows that there are people out there that will pay for anything. Is this an unethical business or is there a market for farts in a jar? If you don't know anything about either of these stories, I'm going to give a quick breakdown. So Stephanie Mado, I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly, AKA Stefanka is a reality TV star, content creator on YouTube, TikTok, and adult content creator on OnlyFans and Unfiltered, in addition to being a fart entrepreneur, as she likes to call herself, which I think is kind of, I think it's kind of cute and kind of funny at the same time. Stephanie even wrote a book called Mean Boys and Memories. Fun fact, she plays the piano, but has said in a YouTube video, she knows she'll never be a pianist. It's just for fun and, and a hobby. There was one video on her YouTube channel where she did a house tour and she did show her piano along with like a little nook area. And she said that at one point she would love to have people over and they would be drinking while she was playing some kind of a song for them and, and things of that nature. She was born to Bruce Wayne Mado and Magda Bellaro. Judging by her Instagram, it seems as though her father has sadly passed away, but her mother Magda is still with us today. There is a clip of her saying that her mom is a crazy Eastern European woman who brings food over and is always looking to clean whenever she comes over. And I can relate to this a thousand percent. I know exactly what this feels like because my mom is the exact same way and same thing. She is also an Eastern European woman. 
But there is a video on Stephanie's channel from a few years ago talking about her being diagnosed with aplastic anemia. According to Google, aplastic anemia is a rare condition in which the body stops producing enough new blood cells. Aplastic anemia develops as a result of bone marrow damage. The damage may be present at birth or occur after exposure to radiation, chemotherapy, toxic chemicals, some drugs, or infection. The reason why I even mention this is because she is trying to spread awareness about this along with working on a documentary about it. Since it's something she speaks out about, I figured out of respect for her, no matter what anyone's opinion is of her or this farts in a jar business, she is bringing awareness to a very serious and rare condition. It's so serious that in one of the episodes for 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, which is a show that she was on, it's a reality TV show on TLC, her mom and her speak about her traveling because she needed to get blood drawn every three weeks because Stephanie has said that she's at a higher risk for infection, traveling can be very dangerous for her. As of a recent Rolling Stones article, she is currently in remission. Now that we've gone over that, let's get into 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, which is, like I just said, it was a show that she was on. Even though Stephanie had her YouTube channel and OnlyFans for quite a bit, she would eventually become a reality TV star by going on 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days. Stephanie and Erica, her girlfriend at the time, were the show's first LGBTQ plus couple in 2020. It's mind boggling to me that after so many seasons of this show, this is the first time we've seen the LGBTQ plus community being represented, but that's a discussion for a whole nother day. However, a lot of people have questioned if she's truly bisexual or not and have said she only pretended to be in order to be on 90 Day Fiance. In my opinion, I don't think it's anyone's place to question her of something that severe. But if the accusations are true, that's just wrong on Stephanie's part. Anyway, the couple met through Instagram. Erica reached out to Stephanie after seeing some of her YouTube videos and loving her personality. Needless to say, this Instagram DM turned into a relationship, but Erica does live in Australia. After Stephanie went to Australia to visit Erica, they ended up breaking up. That part of the show really made Stephanie look like a very toxic girlfriend. She very well could be, but reality TV isn't actually reality TV. It's very staged and they do need drama in order for the viewer to be engaged and keep the masses talking about it after the episode airs. Stephanie did end up on 90 Day Single Life. At some point in this timeline, her and another creator on YouTube called Your Wet Sock pretended to be engaged and it's theorized that this was just for clout. Let's fast forward a bit to one of her business ventures. She went viral on TikTok in December of 2021 for making a video about her fart jars that were selling for $1,000 per jar. Hey guys, today I'm gonna be showing you a day in the life of a girl who sells her farts in a jar. So I like to get things rolling with some beans, a protein muffin, sometimes even a yogurt, less sugar is better, some hard boiled eggs. And today I decided I was gonna make myself a protein shake with some yogurt added to it. And oh, I was feeling it for sure. Uh, while I wait for those farts to develop, I like to read, I'm very smart, love to read. And then after I'm ready to go, I go ahead and, you know, do my work, do my job. I don't need to show you that, guys, but I like to add in little flower petals. I feel like they attach the scent and make it last longer. And when I'm finally finished with my jar, I like to leave a personalized note. I want to thank you so much to the 97 people who have already purchased their jar of farts. And as you know, they're on sale right now, 50% off with $1,000. So go to my unfiltered and check it. According to a Rolling Stone article, here is why Stephanie thinks that there's been such a high demand for her farts. People really like the idea of spending an exorbitant amount of money and kind of being, I don't want to say swindled, but it's like a financial domination thing for a lot of men, she says. As a self-described fartrepreneur, however, Mado may have girl bossed a little too close to the sun. On Christmas, she says, she went to the ER with what she describes as heart attack-esque symptoms which doctors promptly diagnosed as severe gas pain as a result of her diet. Mado's visit to the ER, which she recounted to a journalist from the UK outlet Jam Press, was aggregated across news outlets across the globe, prompting fervent social media debate as to whether Mado's fart selling enterprise was a savvy business move or a cultural death rattle resounding 
from the bowels of late stage capitalism, pun very much intended. Talking about her ER visit though, what's kind of strange is a picture that's being shown of her being hospitalized for her fart jars is one about her aplastic anemia by other creators or news stations. Unless if maybe no one scrolled through her Instagram to see the photo is from a different visit. The intense gas pains though that she was diagnosed with is actually because she changed her diet in order to keep up with the demand of her fart jars. So she was eating things like protein, hard boiled eggs, beans, and things of that nature. Stephanie claims to have grossed over 200,000 with selling her farts according to an Instagram post of hers. She did an entire interview with Rolling Stone, which I'll leave linked below, but there were a few parts of it that I wanted to share. So the interviewer said, I think it's really interesting that sex workers get harassed for quote unquote, exploiting these men like Belle Delphine, who got so much hate online for selling her bath water. But as you point out, oftentimes the exploitation is the point. The men are paying to feel like they're being exploited. So Stephanie responded with, yes, exactly. And a lot of them are, and I don't think it's exploitative at all. I think like it's a super, super honest transaction. People know what they're paying for. They're willingly inputting their credit card information, knowing what they are getting. There's also the potential that I could have just sprayed fart spray into that jar, or I could be sending an empty jar, but I'm not. And they're putting their faith in that. The interviewer says, can you tell me a little bit about the economics of it? Like, how did you decide how to price these jars at $1,000 each? Stephanie responds with, there's not a lot of products out there that are like this. I'm currently on a new season of a television show that's pretty popular, 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life. So I knew that I could probably charge a premium. It was around the holidays that I was selling them. So I did offer a discount of 50% off. And I had a few customers who live internationally who wanted to order them in bulk. So I did offer those people bulk order discounts. But there were some people who were so invested in the financial domination aspect of everything that they insisted on paying the full thousand dollars, even when I had the sale going on. So I kind of just accepted it, but I really believe in valuing yourself. I value my time. I put a lot of effort and energy into every single order. And when you take into account the shipping and handling the materials, the food that I have to eat to produce the farts and everything, some people might think that a thousand dollars is too much, but I think it's a good price. The interviewer asks, is the scent actually in the jar? Do you ever smell your own product afterwards just to confirm? Stephanie responded with, this is kind of a little bit of my secret, but I don't fart into the jar. I actually have these fabric woven flower petals that I ordered in bulk off Amazon. They're not real flower petals. They're completely scentless. I'll put that flower petal in my butt crack and I'll fart on it directly. So you do get a little bit of that booty smell on it, which really lingers. Oh my goodness. It sticks to the fabric of the flower petals. So it does stay for a really long time. Then I caulk the jar and then I wrap the jar in tape and then I put it inside a bubble wrap and seal the package. Stephanie was then asked, how did you actually end up in the ER? She responded with, I bit off more than I could chew the week before Christmas. I had a lot of orders I promised, a lot of clients that I was going to fulfill. I was basically following my protein diet, the beans and protein shakes. One day I really, really, really overdid it. I was feeling kind of weird all throughout the day, but it got really bad when I laid down in bed that night. I had this squeezing tightness feeling around my heart and it was so uncomfortable and it was getting worse. I would breathe in and I wouldn't be able to breathe in all the way because it would feel like a tightening around my heart. I also have a pre-existing condition. I am in remission, but I did for three years have a very severe case of aplastic anemia. So I'm always paranoid and overly cautious. I called up my friend, she brought me to the emergency room and I told them my symptoms. I was also on birth control for the first time in three years, so I thought maybe I'm having a stroke and maybe that's why I'm feeling like this. They admitted me right away, they gave me my own room and they ran an EKG and did a blood panel. They asked me if I just started taking any new medication, if I had changed my diet recently and I told them what I'd been eating. And they kind of like looked at me like, okay, that's interesting. I didn't really mention the jars because I thought that that was a little bit embarrassing. I told them I work out a lot. They didn't really push any further than that. So a couple of hours went by, I got the blood test. EKG results came back perfect. I was relieved. Then they told me this honestly sounds like you just have really bad gas pain. So just try taking a gas suppressant and avoid these foods that you've been eating. So I was just like, okay, cool. Avoid the foods that I've been eating for months for my business. Well, now we move on to the fart NFTs. Because of the hospital visit, Stephanie decided to pivot to NFTs. Within this same Rolling Stone interview I mentioned, she 
did say that she was working with a graphic designer and developing a collection of digital fart jars. Then she says, we had actually launched that already on fartjarsnft.com. It's also available to mint on OpenSea, and it's basically a collection of 5,000 unique digitally drawn fart jars, and they all have a different theme, and some of them actually come with unlockable redeemable attributes. So 100 of the 5,000 fart jar NFTs actually unlock the ability for you to redeem it for an actual physical fart jar. It's a very, very, very limited quantity simply for the release of the NFT. Of course, there are many people who think NFTs are a scam. I'm one of the people who thinks it's just a fad and believes that artists shouldn't have to rely on something like NFTs. It's no fault of the artist, but just like with everything, this will die down soon and artists will sadly go back to being paid very poorly. Anyway, another part of the interview went over NFTs and it being called a scam. A lot of people have been questioning the value of NFTs or calling them a scam. I'm wondering, is this project intended to be commentary on the actual value of NFTs or the NFT marketplace in general? Or are you like a true NFT believer? So she responds with, oh my gosh, that's a loaded question. I do believe in the value of NFTs. I think they're a way for people to recognize digital artists. Are there NFTs out there that could be scammy? I'm sure, just like with crypto, there's coins in the past that have been scams essentially. So I can't speak on behalf of every NFT project, but mine is obviously legit, and I think a lot of them are too. So the interviewer said, but I wanna push you on this a little bit because I mean, I think a lot of people would say that farting in a jar and packaging it as an NFT is very much on the scam side of the spectrum. So what makes the fart jar NFT more legitimate than other types of NFTs in your opinion? Stephanie responds with, well, people are paying for artwork on the blockchain and I think it's a pretty straightforward transaction. There's no false promises in play. There's a lot of people out there who do believe that NFTs are a scam, but I just think it's maybe because they don't understand really what they are and that's their default is just to say it's a scam but there's a whole community that supports it and I'm enthusiastic about it. So if we go on her website, there is a portion where it talks about how much it costs for these NFTs. And of course it's in crypto. I know that that stands for Ethereum. And I think that the amount that she's charging, it comes to, out to be about almost a little bit under $200 or something like that. On the website, there is a private Discord as well and a link to her unfiltered profile, which unfiltered is kind of like an OnlyFans from my understanding from watching her YouTube videos and checking out her Instagram and everything. Like I said, this is just from my understanding after the whole OnlyFans debacle when they started saying that they were going to start banning explicit content and stuff like that and a lot of people got really upset about it and up in arms because I mean for some people this that is their livelihood. So because of all of that Stephanie and someone else I don't know the name because I couldn't find it. She only mentioned a little bit on her YouTube channel but because of that, her and someone else, they decided to create Unfiltered, which is kind of like a spinoff of OnlyFans. And so of course she's, it's adult content. But on the website, it says, fart jar NFTs have four use cases that make owning them a blast. The first one is access to Steph for pleasure or business. Each token holder will be given access to a private Discord channel with Steph. Some of you may want to be able to communicate with her in an intimate setting while others may have questions about becoming a fart entrepreneur yourself. Two, Zoom meetings with Steph, the collector with the most fart jar NFTs one week after launch, will have the opportunity to spend 30 minutes in a Zoom call with Stephanie. The collectors with the second and third most fart jar NFTs will be both eligible for a 15 minute Zoom call with Steph. So of course this is just promoting people to purchase more. Three, mentor program. Become a girl boss with access to a private group with Steph where you can be mentored on how to build a brand, become a content creator, and become a fart entrepreneur. That is the main reason. I know that that's a very small portion of this video, but that is the main reason why I wanted to speak on this topic because of this mentor program. I made $45,000 in one week selling my jars of farts. And ever since my last TikTok went viral, I've been getting a lot of questions such as, how long do the farts last? Asked, did I really fart 97 times in two days? Who buys my farts and why? And what are some of my tips and tricks? So the first question I get asked a lot is how long do the farts last? And the smell is most prominent for the first two days, but as I like to say, one whiff makes memories that last a lifetime. Now, why do people buy my farts in a jar? I honestly think it's because I have a really good personality and also because I'm hot. 
Now, what are some of my foot styling tips and tricks? Number one, don't eat fiber one bars. You might think it's the easy way out, but there is nothing easy about it on its way out. You know what I mean. Don't push yourself too hard, literally and figuratively. Just have fun and don't let people judge you or get you down. It's a business, you're making money and it's not hurting anyone. This holiday season, buy a jar and support local small business. Link is in my IG. Thank you guys so much for all of the love and support. It has been seriously overwhelming. I am getting flooded with DMs with people asking how they can do this, how they can get one, and it's been seriously amazing. So thank you so much. Happy holidays. Of course she has an advantage because she is a reality TV star. So she is going to have a larger following regardless but she did have her YouTube channel prior to 90 Day Fiance. I'm sure it grew a lot after 90 Day Fiance. And I'm not sure if this content creator mentorship is also speaking on the topic of OnlyFans and Unfiltered, which for her is creating adult content. And the thing is, is that when it comes to adult content, I do think that there is a responsibility that falls on the content creator of that to tell people that it's not just opening up an OnlyFans and putting your body and everything like that out on the internet. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with sex work or anything like that, but what I'm saying is some people willy-nilly will join these things, but they don't understand that there can be repercussions. Your family can see this content or let's say that you wanna stop doing adult content. If you go ahead and apply for a job then that job might find that adult content and they might not like it. They might judge you for it, which they shouldn't judge you for it. And that would be, you know, that in my opinion, I think that's terrible. But at the same time, these are things that you have to think of. You also have to think of, can it be dangerous as well? There are a lot of weirdos on the internet. And there are a lot of people who have their own opinions about sex work. It can be a very dangerous thing to get into if you're not careful. And I do think that these adult content creators have a responsibility to talk about the good and the bad, the pros and the cons. It shouldn't just be join this because from a video, I forget which one it was, but it was a video on her channel where she spoke about there being a referral link for the unfiltered app or platform. And a lot of people are going to give out their affiliate link because they're going to want to make more money. But like I said, there is a responsibility for these content creators to talk about the pros and the cons. But that's just my opinion. Maybe that's not the opinion of everybody else, but I do think that, that that's just my opinion. Anyway, not to mention that this whole mentorship and boss babe program and all of that, is this an MLM? Is this a way for her to promote some kind of MLM company that she's coming up with? I mean, it seems like she's constantly coming up with new ideas on how to make money, whether it be for the long haul or whether it be just right now, let's make some quick money. Because obviously being a far entrepreneur is not going to last very long, especially because Look at what already happened. She already put herself in the hospital because of the diet that she was on in order to keep up with the demand of the product. Maybe she's trying to come up with an MLM. Who knows? Whether that be by selling farts and jars or by selling these NFTs. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a mentorship program on how to be an actual content creator and not an MLM rep and masking the MLM portion of it as being called an influencer or content creator because we see that all the time. We see these companies like Tori Bell, for example, they call their reps influencers and that's not what they are at all. That's the actual name of their ranking system. So a lot of these companies will promote their ranking system that way. So again, I'm not sure if it's an MLM company that she's promoting or an MLM business opportunity or if it's really just for content creation. So I guess we'll see in the future, I guess we'll find out. But that was one of the main reasons that I did want to go over this whole farts in a jar thing because of that. And like I already said, I know it's a very, very, very small portion of this. I felt like I needed to talk about it, especially after watching Michelle McDaniel's video on it and Cinnamon Toast Ken as well. I watched both of their videos about this whole situation. After I learned about that, I did a little more digging and everything. But anyway, okay, back to what we were talking about. Number four, profile picture and community. On top of the fartastic use cases above, the artwork can be used as a profile picture so that you can proudly display your inclusion in the most explosive community in the NFT space. 
What I found interesting were some words from Steph on here. And I mean, in my opinion, she found something to create and sell and she just kind of ran with it and people bought it. But it says, for as long as I can remember, it has been assumed that girls don't poop and girls most certainly don't fart. Today, we are changing the narrative on what women can and can't do and on what women should and shouldn't do. Fart jars are all about taking ownership of your body, your inner worth with an added whiff of creative genius. Making a statement and an impact is not about pushing a fart. It's about pushing yourself to do anything you set your mind to. Fart jars are a symbol of feminine power, hope, joy, and lightheartedness in even the darkest times. Keep calm and fart on. Because of all of this fart jar business, Farah from MTV's Teen Mom is now selling her feces. Yes, she is selling her poop. Farrah says that she was inspired by Stephanie to sell her poop. She is currently charging $100 for videos of her pooping, but is now also charging extra for the poop being put into jars and shipped. That's pretty interesting and just different. And I'm really trying not to fetish shame here, but I mean, it's not my thing. So to me, it is very odd. It is very strange. But like I said, I'm not trying to fetish shame. I'm sure that there's people out there that really enjoy that. But it's, it's, it's not my thing. That's all I got to say. It's not my thing. But because I don't normally make videos like these, you're probably wondering why I even brought it up. Is this all just one big scam? I mean, possibly it could be. If it's not, it's definitely different. Or is this all just a publicity stunt of sorts? I really can't pinpoint what this is. However, Stephanie did make a lot of money by selling farts in a jar and now she's selling NFTs along with being referred to as a fartrepreneur. Like I said, I don't know if it's a publicity stunt because she is currently on 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life, or, or whatever it is. So of course she's got a lot of momentum going on. There's a lot of publicity surrounding her. Of course, now that she's been to the emergency room and everything for these fart jars because of her diet, it could be all a scam, but it could be a legitimate business that she did as a joke maybe, and she didn't think it would actually become anything. But this just goes to show that people will pay for anything but it is not my place to judge anybody who purchases these things. It's not my place to judge Stephanie as a fartrepreneur or a content creator or anything like that, but it is all very strange to me. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I know that this video was very, very, very weird for me to make, but I just, I don't know why. I, I just, I really wanted to talk about it because I thought it was different because I do cover a lot of the same type of unethical businesses and scams and stuff like that here on this channel. I kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit and talk about something that's a little lighthearted and that is just different because it was something that caught my attention. I watched a video by Michelle McDaniel, which is uh, from the channel, My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. I watched a video about this on her channel and then of course because I watched that a bunch of recommended videos came about into my my feed and everything so that's why I just really wanted to talk about it but anyway you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below and would you like to see more commentary from me on different things maybe not necessarily current events because I cannot keep up with current events I actually was able to film this because I had a little extra time, but maybe current events, not so much, but other topics or, or things like that. If there's anything that you would like me to go ahead and cover that's not anti-multi-level marketing, leave it in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye!